Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Union Trail Town Council meeting for Tuesday, April 24th, 2018. As a reminder, if you would, please put your cell phones on silent or vibrate and take any phone calls outside. Um, at this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you remain standing for our moment of silence, and if you would, please remember we had the passing of First Lady Barbara Bush this past week, and keep their family in your prayers. Thank you. You may be seated. this time, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Patrick, you did have... Uh, item 10A, could you read that please based on council's request? Okay. Do we need to ma make a motion to, to uh, strike that? Is council okay with that? Any objections? Oh, you have no objections. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else, Patrick? Uh, no. Okay. Any other additions or deletions by council? If not, I'll need a motion to approve the amended agenda, please. Motion to approve the agenda. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to approve. All in favor? Agenda approved unanimously. Brings us to presentations, 2018 Citizen of the Quarter, um, which first quarter was awarded to Mr. Billy Klingon. I know you're here, sir, if you'd stand up and come forward. Um, Councilman Head, would you like to make the presentation since he was your nomination? We said um, when I nominated you, you came in with a problem, you came in with a solution, and you went out and corrected it. And for that reason, we uh, unanimously nominated you uh, for citizen of the first quarter. Thank you, and thanks to your family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we get the whole council up? Sure, you all want to get on, in on this? Sure. <laughs> Everyone in nice and tight together? On me. One, two, three. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, just make sure he speaks into the microphone. Testing? Yes, that's okay. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for this award. I greatly appreciate it. It's an honor to receive this. Uh, of course, it's all a, uh, a group effort. I want to thank the town council and the mayor and, uh, and also uh, Patrick Sadik, the town manager, who did a great job in organizing litter pickup. We've had other people involved, my wife and... That brings us to our second presentation, which will be given by uh, Jesse Lindbergh from Turning Point. Uh, about three weeks ago, I received a letter in the mail from Turning Point 
uh, requesting to speak before council. And um, <coughs> the floor is yours, ma'am. Uh, my name is Bridget Hardin. I'm the Outreach and Advocacy Specialist for Turning Point, which is a new role um, for us to try to bring more prevention um, into the community. Um, so our mission for Turning Point, if you're not familiar, is to um, end domestic violence, sexual abuse, and child abuse through safe shelter, um, advocacy prevention, and social change. So in 2015, um, we became a three-in-one agency. So we are a 24-hour domestic violence shelter, and then we um, incorporated the Treehouse Advocacy Center and the Sexual Assault Resource Center into our community as well. We are the only um, agencies in Union County that serve um, victims and survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse. So last year, we served at the domestic violence shelter 1,152 victims. 56 were directly from the Indian Trail. We did um, 416 crisis calls, and 26 came from the Indian Trail zip codes. For the Treehouse Advocacy Center, which serves children that have been sexually abused, <coughs> or severely physically assaulted, um, we have served 246 total victims and 43 came from Indian Trail. For the Sexual Assault Resource Center, and those are for um, men and women over the age of 18, we served 109 total victims in Union County and 11 were directly from Indian Trail. So we, again, are the only agencies that serve um, victims of sexual violence, um, domestic assault, and child abuse. So that means that we provide all of our services free to our community in um, Union County. So I actually go into the schools and do prevention talks on teen dating violence. I also teach um, stewards of children, which is um, giving signs um, of child sexual abuse. And then we also have advocacy that's free. We provide counseling. If, if someone is not able to afford counseling, we subsidize that as well. Um, and of course, our domestic violence shelter, we provide three meals a day, snacks, um, for everyone that's at the shelter. And currently, the shelter is full and has been full for the last three months. Any other questions? Where, where are you? Where, oh, where, where, where are you located? You can't tell that. So I, I cannot disclose where right. the domestic violence shelter is, but the Child Advocacy Center and Sexual Assault Resource Center are on Winchester Avenue in Monroe, which is probably about a block from the courthouse. Cool. Um, if the council doesn't know, you also run a series of thrift shops. We do. Thank you so much. Yes. So in Union County, we have um, two um, boutiques, one on Old Monroe Road and one in Waxhaw. And then we also have a home decor store, um, so you can get couches. Directly back into our programs so that they are funded. Yes, you, if I remember correctly from when I was there, you also um, helped them get placed back in the housing on their own and work towards it. Um, one other question. Yes. Um, which other municipalities are supporting you financially? Have you received any yet on your outreach? For outreach, no. Um, so I'm under a GCC grant, um, but it only funds pretty much just me um, and not materials and getting into um, the schools with different curriculum. And you're here today asking Indian Trails Council for
questions, Council. So you target more or less the high schools in terms of your outreach program, education? Well, at the shelter, we also have a hero program, and that is for um, children from um, 3 to 18. So it teaches children how to learn about healthy relationships and unhealthy relationships because a lot of children um, and adults, they've never seen a model of a healthy relationship. So we really sit down with the children and we, um, we have a whole curriculum that goes over what abuse is, what love should look like, what a healthy relationship should look like, and also to see the signs and work through um, some of the triggers of teen abuse and being abused as well. Has, uh, has the school system been supportive of you coming in and doing that advocacy, um, basically, which is you know education so to help prevent some of that that may occur? Any other questions? I do. <clears throat> if someone wanted to donate furniture and other material, uh, something for chairs or tables or whatever, where, wh wh how would they get with you to uh, have that delivered? Thank you. Okay. Um, council, she's here today asking for a monetary donation as per policy. Uh, all monetary donations that are asked for in a current meeting are to be put on the following meeting to be discussed and voted on with as much information that the council could get between the next three weeks, I believe it is, until the next <coughs> meeting, or is it two? Two. Two weeks. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you can get as much information as you can to <coughs> Kathy over the next several days okay. for the council and leave a number where council can reach out to you and ask any questions and they'll bring it back before the council at the next meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to public comments. A reminder, you have three minutes. Audience, please be respectful as well as council and keep your comments civil. Our first speaker is Michael Falkenberry. Your time begins when you state your name. appraisal addressed that plaintiff's work was not satisfactory in the areas of quality, judgment, knowledge, and ability to get along with co-workers, supervisors, and public communication skills, leadership, ability, development of subordinates, and decision making. The performance appraisal noted that the plaintiff had not provided the management supervision or leadership necessary to meet the city standards and needed to gain the loyalty and cooperation of the staff by showing them respect and allowing them speak their opinions freely without intimidation. The performance appraisal noted that plaintiff ten tended to raise his voice inappropriately, was intimidating and controlling, and talked down to his staff. Plaintiff had referred to co-workers and management in a derogatory manner and referred to one manager as a, I can't say the word, microphone, for the record, and was directed never again to engage in such 
conduct. A number of concerns were the result of employee interviews conducted by the city's human resources personnel. Employees had reported concerns that plaintiff micromanaged staff, refused to listen to the views of concerns of others, and was intimidating, arrogant, bullying, and condescending. Human resources staff reported that a majority of the engineering division did not like, respect, or trust the plaintiff, and some were fearful of the plaintiff. As a result of these concerns, management determined that the plaintiff would be permitted to remain in the position of city engineer, but his job description would be modified to remove all supervisor responsibilities. Also, the plaintiff made it clear he had no intention of addressing management's concerns or accepting responsibility for his actions, unquote. I just read it to the record. It's from a court case. Number CP 2014, uh, excuse me, 2014 CP 268405 from Florida County, City of Myrtle Beach. I do understand animosity is created in a workplace. The reason I'm reading this is because of what my wife has witnessed firsthand, so have I, and what I witnessed in a recent stormwater community. I understand that that was addressed the last one water meeting, but again, it's noted there is a history. It's documented. I didn't make this up. It's public record. If anyone wants to look at it, thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'll close public comments and invite Captain Coble to the uh, podium. <coughs> Did you want to sign up for public comments? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to reopen public comments. If the council's okay with that, since I've closed them, there's no objections. No, no. It's okay. I will recognize Mayor Pro Tem Cohn. You have three minutes, sir. David Cohn. If you need, that, if you need more than three minutes, you just ask the council. Okay, I'm fine. David Cohn, 10, 1019 Philly Drive. Um, <clears throat> I think that was a, I have no idea of what, what that was all about, uh, other than the fact that's the first time I've heard of it. But one of the things I wanted to say is, is, I'm considering the source that it's coming from, and I think most people in this room consider the source that what, what you just hear, e even though they may be public facts. I think we're hearing one side of maybe the story uh, and not two sides of the story. But I think really what's important is what kind of job uh, is our town manager doing now? And he's doing a fabulous job right now. And I think he's, he's supported by uh, all council members. He's supported by a lot of the staff. Uh, the town is moving in the, in the best direction that it's moved in in many, many years. Uh, the knowledge that he has uh, with uh, our streets and our roads, uh, the money that he saved us, the extra time that he's putting in, in the office, uh, working six to seven days a week, uh, is unheard of. Uh, I think we all aware up here that there were problems in Myrtle Beach and, and, and uh, uh, I think we're all aware that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Sadik, that you, had, you sued the town of Myrtle Beach. So uh, I'm, I certainly don't want to drag uh, Mr. Sadik all through why he s sued the town and could it very well be possible. The important thing is, is, is what is he doing now? And what, what, what is he doing for the town now? Is he saving the town money? Is he doing good things for the town? Are the employees happy? I'm sure there's two sides to every story, but I me personally consider the source of where I hear things. And when you hear the source that comes up and speaks about uh, each and every one of us at one time or another, uh, calling us a liar, calling us uh, having a secret, secrets, uh, uh, saying we're doing this, that, and all these bad things, you know, pretty soon it's like the, the, the boy who cried wolf, you know? People quit listening. And, uh, you know, I'll never stop listening to the residents. But I think, I think that was, uh, Mr. Sadek, you have my support. 10 uh, seconds, sir. And uh, you have my support because I've seen firsthand what you do. I didn't know you when you worked in Myrtle Beach, but I understand there were some consequences mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that I'm sure works both ways. Uh, and I, that's, that's just a comment that All I right. wanted to make. Thank you. If there's no other objection, I'm going to reclose the public comments. Losing. Okay. Captain Coble, sorry for the delay. <laughs> I, 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 
Well, then, thank you. Have a seat. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to skip. The only thing I've got tonight is introduce these two fine gentlemen over here. One of them fine gentlemen, the other one's just here. But <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you. 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 And so we did a uh, we did a trade. It's kind of like going to the NFL draft. And we go down there between me and Cody and the rest of us. We're always going down there picking and wanting, trying to get the best ones. But I won out on this one because these are two two fine young men. Uh, Garrett Davis started working with the sheriff's office in 2004. He's a graduate of Sun Valley High School. He spent four years in the Navy. He's been on our SRT team for eight years. He's got his advanced certification in law enforcement awarded by the uh, state. And he's married and got two girls. And the one thing I will tell you about Garrett, he'll probably laugh when I say this, his mother-in-law was running the pack. Y'all all know how to get up there. Yeah. Y'all see him do something around here. That's called Miss Linda. She'll, she'll snatch him up and he's not. <laughs> Sitting beside him is Sean May. And Sean started with us in 2007 with the Sheriff's Office and graduated from Piedmont High School. He uh, also graduated from NC State University, so David, don't throw anything at him. I told you we're, we're a big fan of the wolf pack. Yeah. Go along with that. But the, uh, he's been on our SRT uh, team, special response team from the Sheriff's Office since 2011. He's also been awarded his advanced certification. And uh, Sean, for any of the uh, ladies that's curious right now, he's engaged in marriage. So <laughs> I'll leave it back. We do, we do still have a couple of gentlemen down there, Anthony and some more of Mason that are down. So if anybody's looking, just come over there to the office, knock on the door. We'll try to get Anthony married up too. But I am going to skip on the rest of them, but I did want to introduce these two gentlemen. Uh, also proud to have them up here, working around them, working with them for a long time now. Both of them came off of our David Squad rotation, which was run by Brian Ham. And Brian has a long-standing history of being up here and around Indian Trail, worked a lot of cases up here when he was an investigator and assigned the lieutenant over investigation. And uh, Brian served in my position whenever I was going to Quantico years ago, so he's got a vested interest in Indian Trail as well. So we, we couldn't have had a better one to be working up under probably coming up here. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Welcome. Gentlemen, welcome to Indian Trail. Thank you, sir. That brings us to the consent agenda. If there's no changes or questions, we'll need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Head? A um, couple of changes. I actually read through all of them. Um, on uh, new business uh, and under development, you've got 2010 through 20, uh, 2017. We'll just change it to 2017. On the minutes? Where on the, were we uh, on the minutes of the uh, mm -hmm. council meeting. Right. Okay. Under you, new business, under developments. New business. I, I can give you this. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is that all, Mr. Head? Okay, um, those are just minor typos, correct, yes. Karen? So yes. we can proceed pending the correction of the typo? Absolutely, yes. Okay, Sorry. all right, <laughs> if, there's no other, <laughs> if there's no other changes, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda pending the correction of the typo on the year. So moved. Ms. Howells made the motion to approve, all in favor? Consent agenda approved unanimously. There's no public hearings for not tonight. That brings us to item 10, old business. That would be Sagecroft. Mr. Seda. Thank you, Mike. I yield the floor to you, sir. Thank you. Um, Michael, can we get to the slide? Yep. Uh, the first time uh, Karen and I, we approached council, uh, there was a <coughs> swap uh, land deal with the Sagecroft developer. And uh, a few weeks ago, they came back and they said that they could not get that commercial area that's right there on Monroe Road. So we had to change plan. If you flip to the second one. So right now, what they're requesting is this area down here and, and an area that takes the sewer all the way to Brandon Oak. So I'm working with Karen right now to uh, uh, go ahead and take care of the agreement, but there will not be any land swap. There will be sale of the property. We will sell the property, both of them. And then we will have easement to access uh, 
the trail and, and any amenities around that pond. So I just wanted to make council aware of the change and also uh, 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 the amount of money we'll be sharing with council soon, Karen and I, uh, the agreement and the amount of money that ex exchange for selling the property. So it, it was reduced uh, much more than it was originally. So uh, I think we're, we're in good shape, Karen, if you want to comment on that. Yeah, um, because we're not no longer doing a land swap, we do have to go through a different procurement process. And so we are in the process right now of getting the appropriate documents drafted for that. And um, we should be back to council, hopefully, by the next meeting, by May 8th, um, with the first of what will likely be several, docu um, several resolutions that the board will have to pass to get this transaction completed. Any further questions? Mr. Sadek, is that all on that issue? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That brings us to item C, the fiscal year 18-19 budget. Mr. Wadowitz, Mr. Sadek, the floor is yes. yours, gentlemen. Will I be able? I'm sorry? Uh, yes. Uh, the last time we met with council during the budget retreat, we, uh, you've asked us or we promised to come back and refine some numbers and show different models rather than the equal payment model. So we have two models to share with you tonight, but I'd like to go just refresh my mem uh, your memory to go over some of the items. No changes in here uh, except uh, the additional increase by Union County Sheriff's Office, and this is included in this expense right here. And the revenues is kind of, we just, a small number, it didn't change much. Uh, this first graph right here shows the revenue. This is the revenue that we're gonna be using in addition to this revenue right here, which is equal to the five cents that we use for the CIP and any money left from the operating budget. So. Whatever is shown in green, this number right here, and this number down here, which is money coming from investment, power bills, stormwater revenues, stormwater reserves, available bond for street, Monroe Road, we have $500,000 that issued, but we have not used it, so we're making some money on that right now. And then also, it shows that uh, this will show you how this uh, 9500 will be applicable in the chart as we go f uh, down. Uh, park ba uh, bond, uh, and then uh, back from Monroe, what we're looking at, this is the $50,000 that we got from the economic development uh, contract. And uh, simply this one is a 25 million street contract, and we, we do have two of them. We have park and street, and these has not been issued yet. So we're showing them as equal payments. When we issue those two, then we'll show them as an income that we'll be using to pay some bills uh, uh, for our uh, expenses. What we're showing right here in red, these are six bonds that we, s we shared with you last year uh, with our budget. These are sort of the active bonds, except the ones that they're shown in yellow. They're authorized, but they're not issued yet. So th this is our, this is what we're <coughs> going to be paying our revenue against. Th this is considered as part of the expense within the next 14 years. So uh, just to go quickly over on purchase of the admin building, we sti we're still paying on that. Purchase of land of Chestnut Parkway, we're still paying on that. And this is for Crooked Creek, the street bond, Monroe, uh, Manure Road, we haven't started paying on that one yet. Construction of Town Hall, this is our yearly payment from now for the next 14 years. And the reason why you're using 14 years because the last bond, it will, <coughs> it will mature in 2031, correct, Jim? That's right. uh, parks, the same thing, equal payment, streets. So we had in the last six that we shared with you last year, three of them were combined. So what we did here is we separated them and then also 
uh, we added the new one that we have not issued yet. So we just keep the red number in mind to go down and show you the chart. And we went over again uh, over all the CIP projects and we determined sort of when we're going to build these projects as much as possible. It all depends on permitting and funding. Uh, but Sardis Roundabout, we're, we're looking into completing this in two years. This is our portion. You're looking right here. This is the entire cost of the project, but this is our portion. So last time there was a question about that. Uh, the complete street, uh, also this is our portion, which is $1.5 million. Gribble intersection, the uh, North Carolina DOT is willing on uh, putting a roundabout right there and the cost of it is approximately 1500000 So they ask us, could you afford two to $300,000? And we said yes. So with time value of money, in a couple of years, it'll be 318000 Chestnut Parkway Phase 2, simply this is a sidewalk. So we put it, we put it in the next uh, uh, two years, actually the second and the third year. Chestnut Parkway Phase 3, this is the cost of our projects. We're planning on handing it to DOT so they could combine it with phase two, have the same contractor, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll save some money there. Uh, the multi-use trail, uh, this is our cost. This is for both trails, the one on Independence and the one by Crooked Creek. The total uh, project cost is $5 million. So ours is $1,081,000 and $81,000. Uh, Monroe Road, again, we'll go over this. Uh, as we go to the chart, you see how we applied that. This is the $9,500,000. Now, they told us that they could give us $5 million back, but they, th that will be coming as a project somewhere else in the city. So uh, we didn't put, we want to show it in here as cash coming in, because if it's going to be a project, then that $5 million will go to a project, like a CIP project. Resurfacing, we, we're proposing to keep the streets uh, uh, life shelf for at least 8 to 12 years. This is how much money we need for the next 14 years. And these four contracts, the pavement marking, markers, patching, and pouring, they come along with the resurfacing contracts. Some, sometimes they come in under budget. Sometimes we don't use most of that money, but we're, we're allocating that money for the next 14 years. Signage, this is simply to, to uh, uh, small ticket item, $3,000 a year, just to make sure all the signs are retro-reflective and safe for our motorists. And uh, old town hall parking, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to make a comment on this one. The concert that we have last Thursday, every parking spaces that we created, uh, there are approximately 33 along the fence by the track. They were all occupied. So uh, we shared with council this one in the past, and this will add a total, it'll be about 80 something parking spaces, Adam. And we, we do have the concept, we've already done the surveying, and uh, we're gonna be coming to council asking for approval to proceed with that project. New town hall parking, again, we're running out of spaces sometimes with a lot of activities here at New Town Hall. And this, the area in the back right here behind the building, we could add 18 more parking spaces. And we'll be doing that in-house to save some money as we saved at Crooked Creek. Uh, Town Hall Trail, this is the connection between uh, new building and old building, and also we'll connect all the parks together. Uh, going down to IT Park Study, this is just a consultant study for $25,000. This is the, IT Park is the neighborhood that is located uh, on the north side of Brandon Oak, the same side of Brandon Oak off of Monroe Road. Uh, floodplain system, uh, we're having a contract uh, uh, this year of approximately $275,000 to clean catch basins, sediments, uh, the floodplain. Uh, there is a possibility that we could skip a year, but it's because we manage the floodplain and we do have issues uh, uh, along along the entire town, so we felt that about two, uh, quarter million dollars would be enough. First Avenue, this is the project that has the three phases, and simply the first one is purchasing that detention pond. Uh, second one will be 
taken the runoff from the pond all the way across uh, uh, Indian Trail Fairview and all the way to, to uh, the creek. And the third one will be uh, installing most of the piping system along First Avenue. Beacon Hill storm drainage. We came before council for, uh, uh, for about $200,000 right now. Among all the seven alternatives that we have, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to clean that channel. We, c we uh, contacted the Corps of Engineers, correct, Todd, and it should be coming to the projects to, to give us the go-ahead to go ahead and start cleaning uh, uh, the channel. If we clean the channel, it will resolve some of the issues. Then it will give us an idea about what out of the six, seven concept could be most applicable after we clean the channel. Pisa Drive is uh, uh, next to First uh, Baptist. Simply, it's a roadway that is uh, very tight. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money to fix it, but we've, we've received a lot of complaints about it. Veterans Memorial, $150,000. We do have a cost estimate, to, uh, a, a, a breakdown of the cost estimate we could share with you tonight. Sun Valley Park. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is what Jason uh, shared with you during our budget retreat. This is our portion. What we're asking tonight, where you already done that uh, uh, for the consent agenda, simply allow him to submit the application and see if we get $85,000 as a grant. Uh, bridge culvert maintenance. This is simply the sediments on either side of the, the bridge culvert throughout the town. Also, we might be able to skip a year here and there. It might not be needed every year. Indian Trail Park, this is the construction of the study for that neighborhood comes back. Uh, as far as I know, Todd and staff, uh, that neighborhood has been suffering for, with drainage issues for the last 15 years. So we allocated some money in there for that. Crooked Creek Phase 2, this is the, the money coming from the bond, $2,500,000. We split it. Uh, in two years. And the last project is Matthews Indian Trail Chestnut Parkway intersection. This is the intersection right here by, by Carolina Courts. When the state comes in and put phase two of the parkway, they, they ask us if we want to contribute money for the mast arm. That's simply cost of the mast arm. We, if we decide to keep it span wire without that, we could take that $106,000 out. So we come over here and we sum up everything and we end up with this chart. And so we made it a bit different from the chart that we shared with you last time because the, the one that we shared with you last time was equal payment throughout the entire 14 years. Simply, if we want to go and build all the CIP projects, every one of them, we, we will need to get money for this green that you see in under the zero line. So the purple will match the money where you see uh, negative. Simply, we, we do have the funds to go out there and pay for these projects out of our fund balance. But after that year, it'll skip a year, and then another one right here, and this is FY22-23. This is when we, we have to pay that $9.5 million. So again, with our fund balance, we could cover all these four items and don't have any negative at all. But uh, the second chart that I'm going to share with you, it shows that this, if we don't go with some of the project, you could see that everything is positive. But we wanted to share with th that with you. But after that, you could see that our, our surplus is always going up as we go further to year 14. Any questions in regard to this chart before I move to the other one? Go back up to the top. <coughs> All the way up. Um, keep going. More? Yeah, very top. Okay. You have a, um, a nickel in there, right? For 19, uh, 19 and 20. This one right here? Mm -hmm. No, this is simply I inserted this one. This number, this is reflective right here, Mike, and that number. So any any money we generate added out of that nickel 
for CIP, it's in this number right here, including what we save from the operating budget, correct, Jim? So it's a combination of both, but to answer your question, it is in this number right here. The only reason why I showed it right here is just to show you that this is our tax rate and that's what, the, that's what we use for CIP. Okay. You weren't suggesting a, a nickel tax increase? No, sir, okay. I was not. <coughs> this is just to show council and the public that that's what we put aside for CIP project. Gotcha. Thanks. You're welcome, sir. So again, now we'll go to okay. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Patrick. Yes, um, can you scroll down, to, or excuse me, scroll back up just a little bit? Sure. Um, right there, and then to the left, please. Say uh, row number 77, 76, 78. Is there any way that we can annotate which ones um, that will be paid for by the stormwater fees? They're all going to be paid by the stormwater fees. We, what, right now we do have, if we go up here, and right now we have $3,400,000 sitting aside reserve for uh, stormwater projects. Right. So we're going to pay those projects out of that reserve. Can, but can, when you go down to row 76, how can I easily look at uh, those rows and know that that's tied to the stormwater fee? Because that, they, uh, I mean, they, oh, I see what you're saying. We could go ahead and note that by stormwater next yeah. to it. Absolutely. I see what you're saying right now. Thank you, sir. I made the assumption that everybody's familiar with those projects, and that's right. not a good assumption. Yes, sir. So, I mean, we do have approximately 31 projects. That's a lot of projects. And we could put off some of them, but my recommendation in regard to pavement and stormwater, get them out of the way because these are the troubling ones. It's like you have to do them. So what I did on the next chart, I kept all the projects that require maintenance and kept all the projects that we got fund, uh, uh, state funding because we have to use it during a certain duration. And any other projects, I took them out just to show you, if we decide to put off some of these projects, we could take some off if we don't want to borrow that uh, uh, money from the fund balance. But before council, uh, three point four million million borrowing that from, from fund balance, and we do have $28 million out there. That, in, in my personal opinion, maybe because I worked with big projects, that's, that's not a significant amount of money for a big town like ours and many projects like we have. So um, before we lose that thought, I'm going to say right here, it's like if we go without CIP, I'm sorry, go ahead, please, sir. I just wanted to add something here if I could. This, is, uh, this whole analysis is based on the 18 and a half cents, so there's, we're not going to increase taxes. Um, and that's important. I know I already worked on this schedule. Um, there was an article in the paper the other day about uh, Monroe is increasing their taxes by three cents because they're building a new police station. But guess what, folks? We built an $11 million building, and we didn't raise taxes. And that's because this guy right here, um, I know I already worked on his schedule. I know he was calling me all weekend. Um, but, you know, we're giving the residents 18 and a half cents and 31 projects, and somehow we're going to get it done. And we have a fund balance because uh, we worked hard. Um, he watches every cent, and uh, you know, I'm proud to be working for him. Well, thank you, Jim. You had a lot to do with that, too. Do you see this change in our Moody rating or any of our credit ratings? I can't hear you, Michael. Sorry. Do you see this changing our, our Moody ratings or credit ratings by taking any of this out of the fund no. balance? Okay. What it does, Please. Michael, is that Moody also looks at how much you're spending and improvement your assets, so they give you credit for that. Okay. Yeah, they look at how much money you have in fund balance. So if you go down a lot without spending that money on fixing your assets, yeah, there might be an issue there. But in this particular case, no, I think we, we should be on the positive side. What, what's the Moody's rating right now? Um, we're, the, we're top 9% in the country, Marcus, AA1. Okay. <clears throat> 
Mr. Morris. Um, at, at a previous meeting, we had discussed if we start drawing down, <clears throat> excuse me, the 15 million, I believe, at what point does it affect the Moody rating? Negatively, or it's a good question, Jerry. But like as Patrick said, Moody's would see, you know, we're not spending on the salaries or operating expenses. They're going to see these assets. So our assets right now, I think, are 68 million. These are going to increase. These projects are going to increase the value of the town. So they're going to work hand in hand. Um, we're way good over watch. Moody's. We have over 100 uh, percent. Moody's will be happy if we, if we took down three, four million out of the 15 and showed the assets corresponding. We'll be fine. Okay. Good question, no. Uh, Council Member Moyes, the, there are, I mentioned in the past, there are six equations that we could go back to and run those equations. They, they could give us more accurate response to your question. We'll be more than happy to run them again based on what we have here. And, and the last word we heard from Moody's, Patrick, was that uh, you know, we're in robust position, which is, um, I remember that word. So we're in good shape. We'll make sure it stays that way. I wasn't going to ask this question, but I'm going to ask it because I think I've asked it before. I think I just forgot the answer. The uh, stormwater money, uh, three million four hundred thousand, uh, is it's part of our fund balance? No, it's it's a different fund, but it's part of the fund balance. Yes, for this analysis. And, and the reason I, I'm asking that because it strictly ha we can't use that money for any other thing other other than stormwater. Correct. So it kind of seems. In, in my mind, it, you know, why is it part of the, what is it part of the fund balance if you can't use it but for one specific thing? So you're, you're not, you know, and, you, and if I'm not mistaken, you have to use it by a certain amount of time, or am I incorrect on that? Um, I'll, de I'll defer to Todd maybe on that one, but it's fund balance. David, they didn't use a lot of stormwater the last couple of years, so this is money that has not been spent. You're correct. It has to be used for stormwater projects, but in the 31 projects, Pat matched that up to stormwater related projects, Beacon Hills, uh, First Avenue. So um, it has to be used for stormwater projects, but it's a fund balance because it's it's a budgeted money that was not used uh, last three or four years, it kept growing and growing. Uh, we increased it last year by 25%, so we're getting more money in this year. Gotcha, thank you. But it's a, uh, it's a good question, David. It has to be used for stormwater and like Jim mentioned, we do have First Avenue three projects there. We have Beacon Hills. We have uh, IT Park. So that will kind of get us going, get those projects out of the way. Because as far as I know, they've been out there pending for a while. All right. Now, uh, on the second chart, simply what I did is I went and taken out some projects. Like I took out Sardis Road roundabout. I zeroed that out. Indian Trail Complete Street. If, if council decide today and say, Patrick, you know, st stop those projects. We don't need the funding and keep only what we need. I kept this one because, uh, you know, the state keeping it. I, sh I should have left the money, uh, our portion here and included it in the analysis because these two projects are funded too. But we have not started on IT Complete Street and we have not negotiated swapping the streets, Indian Trail and Chestnut Parkway. But for the sake of the example, you could see that I took Cricket Creek out as $5 million, so we don't have to show any local contribution just to lessen the impact of the projects. But I kept the essential ones, resurfacing, pavement marking, pavement markers, patching, crack pouring, just to keep our street system in good shape, signage, because also they're safety related, well, they're all safety related. And I took, uh, I kept the storm drainage because that's safety and they've been out there for a while. And the floodplain, the same thing, Beacon Hill, Peace of Drive, Veteran Memorial. I took Sun Valley Park out. That's, uh, that's the park right there by Sun Valley and took Indian Trail Park, Crooked Creek Phase 2, and Matthews Chestnut Parkway intersection, kept that one. So if we go to the chart, just to lessen the impact a little bit of the CIP project, you could see first year, you know, we're good. Second year, we're good. Th this is 
bonds kick in too, right, Jim? And then the third year is negative. But always remember that we could roll what we saved from these first two years into the third year to cover that negative. We always have to keep that in mind. Let's say we have another one somewhere down here. This positive from these three fiscal years can be used to take care of that negative. So that's the only item that we see if, I, if Jim and I decide to eliminate some projects. But just this is for the sake of the, the, uh, showing you a different uh, way of approaching projects. It, the CIP projects and the transportation projects are the big ticket items in here. And it keeps increasing as we go further to year number 14. And this is like Jim said, not, not touching the tax rate. So we will be moving with this one right here if council is okay with that. But again, you know, some of these projects, you know, based on permitting or whatever, they might be delayed three months, four months, six months. And we will keep updating these numbers and share it with council. But we have to move with something for the budget because we only have one month right now, Jim, to, to uh, get the documents ready and, uh, and get it out of the way. Any questions in regard to number one or number two? But the operating budget did not change at all. What we shared with you last time did not change much, and we will be providing council with, uh, with uh, new documentation up to date. It will include probably the, the last month and a half before the end of the fiscal year. Correct, Jim? Right. Very good. Very good. Uh, Michael, the, the presentation, the second one, is it, is it open? Okay, sorry about that. Yes, it. Yes, thank you. Just w I wanted, wanted to share some item with council tonight. Jim and I, we have, we have to go back and, and try to incorporate any of these <coughs> terms that you see up there. Inflation, if we can, interest rate, it changes on us. Dom value of money, taxes, anything subject to taxes. Now, most of the time, that's included as part of the contractor or consultant. The cash flow, we, we do use, you know, that's the difference between receipt and disbursement. We already do that. Now we tried the single payment methodology, which is what would be the, the time value of money two years from now, three years from now. And the chart that you looked at, all that is, is included based on, on the single payment. Last time we showed you using the uniform series, which is you have five different methodology that you could do that. And also we have to look at the payback period, the recovery period, just to make sure that everything we're putting in that budget, considering any of these, the, these terms and these methodologies, depreciation on equipments, on computers, anything like that. And then we keep going, you know, we, we have many bonds, you know, these bonds mature, we look at the valuation, we look at fa uh, fair market values for our properties, the vehicles, and also if we want to, if we want to go to the bank and borrow some money, or if we invest some money, we look for that minimum attraction rate of return. And definitely, you know, the e economic e equivalence, and simply what it is, is, is two cash flows, we look at them, and we choose the best that gives us the, be uh, uh, the, the best minimum attractive return. And also the cost of capital and the benefit cost ratio. What is the benefit? In most of our project, it's not monetary <coughs> benefits, sort of it's less safety benefits, other benefits that benefit the, the town. Uh, but we, we could come up with a benefit cost ratio for that. And then if we ever needed to do an economic feasibility study, we'll do that too. And we look at capitalized equivalents, and we look, we choose among investment alternatives. Now, if council 
says would like to uh, would like us to look at uh, two projects or three projects and select one or two out of those projects, we could do that too. We, we run a small analysis and come back to council and say we 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 decided based on you know uh, these results. But please keep in mind that construction indexes are out there. You know they go up and down. That impact our projects and everything we do. The same thing for building cost material and material cost. Uh, not including the fuel, as we uh, talked last time, Adam, I think that it, that uh, increase in solid waste 1.6 was due to probably fuel related, right? If I'm not mistaken. But we always keep up with. I keep looking at uh, Jim and I. We keep looking at these indexes just to make sure we won't get hit with something uh, very bad. Uh, now. I wanted to do this list just to get council on board that we might run into emergencies, uncertainties, if we're digging a street or anything like that, that could cause risk and cause change orders and cause the project to be over budget. So emergencies and uncertainties are always out there. That's a risk that everybody takes. Interest rate right now, uh, most of the, the money that we make, Jim, it goes from one to 2%, correct? But uh, most of the time we borrow money on bonds, it goes from one and a half to, to two and a half. So we're in that range. Uh, I did include solid waste in there. Town employees, most of the employees, they average about 5% increase every year. So we look at that one too. Health insurance this year it went up a little bit, uh, but we worked things around by canceling a small program and taking the money and, and put it under health insurance so it won't impact our premium. Inflation most of the time is a good number to use 2%. And uh, we'll be working with Adam on equipment replacement, when to retire these equipments. The last three items that I wanted to show is since we're not an enterprise and we do not have water and sewer and also uh, 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 fire right now. Any time, like Jim mentioned, Monroe did increase their taxes by 3%. So if the county decide to increase their taxes down the road based on, let's say, these three examples, water, sewer, and fire, somewhere down the line that is going to come at us and then we have to react to it. So I'm not advocating that we need to raise taxes. I'm just saying that any of these things could happen and we have to react to it. Any Good job. Well, thank you, David. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. <coughs> Question. <coughs> Do you want us to pick one or the other? No, sir, I think. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, no, I, I think if you're okay, we'd like to move forward with the first model. And uh, definitely as we start saving some money f uh, over the future years, we'll take it. It's going to go back to fund balance anyway. But... Uh, if we run into any change or anything like that before we finalize the document, definitely we'll come back before council and, and let you know. But we are in good shape right now. Thank you, Michael. Is that all on that one, Patrick? Yes, sir. Okay, that brings us to the Veterans Memorial Cost Estimate. Patrick, that's the floor is still under your control. Yes, well, what I did is, uh, and uh, I'm going to turn it to Adam, what I did is I... Adam and I, we sat down and I went over the 3D model. He took all the dimensions, he did all the hard work, and he got all the cost estimates. So we, do we have it, uh, Michael, somewhere in the presentation? It's not up here. Okay, simply we did have a detailed cost estimate and right now we are, I mean, we, we did some value engineering. We are about 141,000. I think we did include it in council's packet when we send the agenda, Kathy, right? So we're trying very, very hard to keep it under $150,000. And uh, we could do that. And uh, I think donation is rolling. So we, we're seeing more donations. And uh, I'd like to say thank you to all council members that assisted in doing that. It's not in there, Mike. Yes, it's $143,580. Uh, 
Thank you, Michael. Any questions right from here. council? So, yeah. Any questions? I've got it here. He's got it. Yeah, okay. he it. yeah that's the same uh, graph that we were, uh, spreadsheet that we were going to share with council tonight. Okay. Thank you. So as, as donations start um, to come in, are you just going to keep a, a running total and let us know? Yes, sir. We, oh. we, today, uh, Jim and his staff, they created a spreadsheet and it's also shared with the manager's office and we will keep updating council where we are. Every milestone will share that budget with you. Thank you. Is that all on Mr. Morse? Yeah. yeah um, you know, I sent an email to council and I uh, didn't know if you guys had had a chance to, to review that or had any thoughts, you know, regarding some of the comments made. reference to, to using the town events to help with donations mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea if yeah I, th I think uh, I think it'd be a great idea council member Moore's if we have sort of like a tent or something and definitely if uh, if uh, VFW could help us with that so that way it will not impact the two three part-time employees that serve in the public during the event Mm -hmm. And then if the VFW, they have a strong presence and, and I think they could do a better job. And then what we'll do is we, we will have so, all kind of information right there on the table. We'll provide them with the information. Uh, I think it's an excellent idea. Definitely we could have a, sort of a booth or something in every event if council decide want to move that in that direction. Um, do you have an update as well? With the I really, I really don't have an update, but I'll try to give you one anyway. Um, as far as what you're talking about, Jerry, I think um, my suggestion too would be, and, and you, you may want to do this. I don't know if somebody on council wants to head that, the that part of it up at the events. That might be the, I wouldn't call it a committee, but a, a, a member of. Uh, that's going out there. And the reason I say that is uh, uh, town staff, I mean, they're already out there working the events and they're already kind of working the overtime. So I, I think we, we need to find who, who's going to work them. I, I hate to ask the town staff to work those, those events and get behind it. So I think, I think you do a great job out there. As a matter of fact, I think, but I, I don't know how much time you got, but I, Thanks, think, coach. I, I, I think you would do a fantastic job, you know, Heading that up with 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 uh, Cheryl and, and might as well throw her out there too. She she's a great help. But uh, whatever, and and we'd help you. We'd all help you. I'd enjoy helping you too. You know, all of us help at the town events. But the first thing I think we need to do, and which we haven't done yet, and I think we need to do hopefully within the next couple of days, is finalize what what we're going to do with the plaques and and actually who, what, where, and when the plaques are we are going to be used there and I think we need to get with the VFW and talk with the VFW to find out exactly what they want as far as that goes so we know what we're selling mm. uh, but we need like you said we need to get on that as quickly as possible and then um, the uh, the golf tournament uh, on June the 30th uh, which uh, I think we already have uh, is could be Todd told me 12, maybe 12 employees here that may be playing and looking for more. And uh, we need all the help we can get from everybody out here. We, uh, uh, and I know you're, you're going to help. I, I know, I know all, I know we're all going to help at, at doing this. And we're going to um, uh, have, as, like I said, we're going to have lunch and we're in the process of getting a flyer made. Uh, but uh, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll be done, I hope, with all of the, all what we we need to do uh, and how we're going to do it because we're actually running out of time you know june the 30th sounds like it's a long time away but it's not you know it's going to be may ne next week so yeah sir i've <coughs> been able to gather almost a dozen gift cards for raffles from different I'm sorry, I've about been able to gather about a dozen gift cards for raffles from local businesses for the golf tournament as well as passed on a few business names that will be willing to sponsor a plaque, and some of the businesses have goodies to put in the bags for the 
That's even better. Golf that, players, so I'll get with you. When you have time, just call yeah, me. We'll sure. sit down and yeah, go well, over I called you yesterday, but oh, you, did you? your voice mailbox is full, so <laughs> that couldn't leave any message. But anyway, uh, to make a long story short, that's all good ideas, and we need to, to you know, call on the businesses of the town to donate for uh, sponsorship for holes and, and all that stuff. So um, it's, I, I can't wait. It's going to be a good time for everybody. For all, we're gonna have a ball. Hope, hope you all come. You know, you don't have to play golf to come either. We, we'll have fun. We'll have lunch. We'll have a ten dollar lunch. Yeah, but uh, just come out and hang out. Big clubhouse. We'll have a good time. Won't we, Shirley? Yes, we will. <laughs> Been down that road before. Yeah, we've done it before. Mr. Sedek, one more thing. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if if Mike and I uh, are able to set a date, also for our business forum where we're, we're planning on inviting, you know, business leaders in the community, engineers, bankers, uh, developers, anybody's out there, business owners, for that day. Also, we're going to uh, try to, ask, you know, share uh, the information so we could get more donations in that event. But we're not going to do that right now because uh, David is working on his tournament. We don't want to take any donation away from him. I'm just kidding, David. <laughs> but uh, that's another way of, of uh, trying to get donations, too. I think we're going to do it here in, in Town Hall. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further questions, we'll move on to the next item. That'll be 11 new business. Item A, Old Town Hall parking. Parking lot. Mr. Sadek? Yes, sir. Uh, Michael, if you could point at the uh, the three, the 33 parking spaces that we have right there by the rail, I think there was a total of 33, if I'm not mistaken. But all these 33 were occupied during Thursday, every one of them. And uh, Union County Sheriff's Office done an excellent job directing them to the back, turn around, and, and, and park facing Indian Trail. So it worked out pretty good. Now, the one, uh, uh, not including Michael behind the building, if you could point from, yeah, the front and all the way down, this and, and then on the side up here on, on Blythe, all the way, there you go. That's what we're planning on adding with this projects that was included in the budget. So we, we, we put about $200,000, but definitely uh, uh, since Chase right now is working on the building, I think if we move forward, we've done the surveying, if we move forward with construction, by the time he's done, we're done, the parking and the building both be done at the same time. So if council is okay, we, we're asking, asking council's approval to move forward with that project. Council, we'll need a motion. <coughs> or a consensus, which, whichever. You talking about for the parking? Yeah, you yeah. wanted to. How, how many parking lots? Thir 33. Isn't it 30? I mean, no, 33, we already got them, but I think Adam, what, 80, the rest? About 80 more parking spaces to be added to the existing ones. And uh, again, as I mentioned in the past, if you want to go take a virgin piece of land right now and put parking lots on it, the cost of each parking space is about $15,000. That's how much it costs you in a brand new parking lot. And this could average is twenty five hundred. A little bit less, yes. And what uh, uh, I think this project right here will complement uh, Crossing Path Park uh, because I've witnessed me and staff. We witnessed a lot of people park uh, on the Indian Trail next to the shopping center, have the strollers walk all the way to here. Well, well, the evidence this past uh, Thursday showed that if they had the parking spaces close to the concert place, uh, they did park there. So we feel that the entire parking lot would be full when we have events there. And also a connection with the trail to our new town hall. Council. Well, seeing as I was one of those folks and my wife that ended up parking at Johnny K's, <laughs> <laughs> And, and walk, and I'd, I'd like to make a motion that um, that we go ahead and proceed with the two hundred thousand. And Mr. Morris made the motion to proceed with the parking. 
Uh, all in favor? That would be unanimous. Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, that brings us to the patching contract. <coughs> Mr. Sadik. All right. Uh, uh, this is the FY1718. So we ha this, is, this belonged to this year's budget. We will have one next year. So uh, the weather is good right now. It's dry, and I think it's time to go out there and do it. Uh, Todd and his staff uh, selected the locations. You're going to see pictures of those locations. But most of them ended up being at cul-de-sac. Now, the reason why we contracting this out is because it's, it's, it's uh, more efficient for a contractor to do it rather, rather than using town resources. We don't have the equipment, and they could go out there and, and complete it in a timely manner. Uh, Michael, if you could scroll down, please. This, uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure Council, Mr. Mayor, all of you are aware of many of the cul-de-sacs that we have out there. If you look at the alligator cracking and the patching that you see, uh, this is the time when to repair that pavement. Otherwise, if it gets worse than that, you have to reconstruct, meaning take the entire base and take the entire pavement uh, out. Now, we don't just make our decision based on visual. Todd and his group went out there also and took cores, and the cores tell us the thickness of the pavement and how much base it has under it, and also sometimes about the condition, condition of the soil. If you could scroll down, Michael, please. Uh, some of them to the point that you have these big potholes that if we go patch it, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to get better. The rest of the area is going to get worse. And it has a lot to do, probably, Adam, with solid waste trucks in the past and the current trips that they have right now. This is another one, too. I know Mr. Mayor have contacted us for on numerous occasions for stuff like that. More. And this, this is a very bad one. We just can't keep them like that. We have to attend to them. Otherwise, we're going to have to reconstruct the entire cul-de-sac. And and the leg that is, is uh, attached to it. So uh, we're asking today now, Todd, this was budgeted for in last year's budget, Jim, right? So the money is there. All what we're asking council is to give us approval to move forward with, uh, with this project. If there's no questions, council. Making a motion to approve. Mr. Heads made a motion to approve. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, sir. Next is item C, the PIR policy budget. <coughs> um, I guess that's up to Karen. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and turn it to Karen. I don't believe this has the new, this, the one in the packet has the new section. If you give me two seconds, I'll pull it up. Sorry about that. As we, um, last meeting, if you remember, uh, I had made a recommendation or suggested that the town establish a budget for public information requests and make that part of the town policy. The purpose for that is twofold. First, it um, provides the council and staff a um, guideline each year to sort of monitor how much money is actually being spent on the public information process. And second, um, it would shine a light on the abuse or non-abuse of the system um, and give council a, a, a working knowledge of what's actually happening inside the operations and what it's costing the town to respond to some of what um, some people consider egregious requests and what can be definitely be egre egregious requests. Um, I'm, I'm going to apologize that this new language isn't in here, but I will definitely shoot it to all of you for review, but I'm going to read it into the record. What I'm recommending we add is a section five to the policy that is in the packet. Uh, the Town of Indian Trail seeks to monitor, manage, and to the extent allowed by law, balance the interests of controlling town expenses against the rights of those seeking public information from the town. 
Accordingly, the Town Council of Indian Trail hereby requires that each year during the town's budget process, the town manager shall establish and recommend to council a, in quotes, public information request budget, forecasting the expected annual expense to be incurred by the town arising from public information requests for council's approval. Should the town exceed the annual budget during any fiscal year, the town manager and director of finance shall proceed to request a budget amendment as required by law. The town seeks to encourage the adoption of creative, cost-effective methods of complying with public information requests, the aggressive use of technology where available and appropriate, and the publication of town information in such a manner as to make it easily accessible to the public. So what, what I believe that section does is A, set out a rule that the town staff and management has to provide a budget for public information requests, and second, gives the policy reasons behind that. Um, I think that's very supportable. I think this would be enforceable um, in North Carolina um, should anybody challenge the, the, that, the validity of that request. And of course, any, it, it, the, in the course of a year, the, the, the council may be faced with running out of a budget number and being asked for a budget amendment. And I don't have an answer for you how that would be to, how to deal with that until we are actually in that moment. Um, and we will cross that bridge when we get there if that's okay with council at this point. But I really believe this is probably a great balance between the concerns that y'all have expressed for a year and um, the obligations the town has to provide information to those requesting it from the public. Quick, <clears throat> sorry, quick question. Yes, sir. Would, um, would it be lawful to also publish the request and the person's asking for them, the cost associated with that as well? Certainly. Um, because I think as their right to know um, what's being discussed within the town or whatever information they're seeking, I also think it's the public's right to know who's really seeking the information and what's the purpose behind it. That there would be there would be no um, there would be no prohibition against publishing the cost in the name of the person requesting. The town does not have a right to ask why. No, no, okay. we don't want to know why, but <clears throat> we can Perfect. publish Certainly. what Certainly they're the cost asking and then, for on the cost. Right. Yes, yes, and who? Yep. Okay. Council Member McIntyre, as I mentioned in past meetings, I will continue listing the name of the requester and the cost in the manager's report every time somebody requests, uh, uh, make, make a PRR request, and then we could do that, correct, Karen? Yes, yes, we can. We will continue doing that, and we will monitor the budget, and we'll come back to council if council is okay by, uh, by approving the PIR policy. So uh, we will continue doing our job and we'll monitor the, the budget. But the name and the cost will be listed uh, and that report is on the website. We, we posted it every time we publish it, right, Michael? Okay, you need a motion for this? Yes, if you, all, if you all are comfortable with this new policy, then we would need a motion to adopt this um, public records request policy. Just one As other amended. quick question, Patrick. Are, aren't we putting this um, also the, uh, aren't we putting it on the agenda or, or in the consent agenda for manager's update. the, uh, not yeah. the manager's update, but the, the who's using the, the uh, PR request, or who's making the PR request. So that, will that be in the consent agenda or will that be, no? No, no. Uh, uh, so far, the only place where we showed it is the manager's report, report. correct, Michael? Right, okay. No further uh, questions. We need a motion, please. I want to make a motion to approve the um, PIR uh, policy. policy as stated as read into record by Karen. Mr. McIntyre has made a motion to adopt a new policy for PIR requests in the line item budget. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Town, that brings us to town hall rental agreement, event rules, and ordinance. Mr. Sadik. Uh, I wanted to mention these two items. Uh, Karen and, and staff is being working together. Uh, Karen has developed uh, the agreement and the rules and the ordinance, and it's out there right now. What we'd like to do is go ahead and provide you f with a copy, uh, maybe tomorrow, and uh, give you a chance for approximately, I'll give you 
approximately a week to review it and get back with us. And if you're okay with it, we present it back before you for approval. So item uh, 11D and 11E uh, recently developed and updated, and we will share them with council uh, for review. And as soon as you approve them, uh, as soon as you review them, give us some comments, we'll come back for approval. Anything you want to add, Karen? I just I thought maybe it would be helpful to go through a little bit of the the the, the ordinance on the um, the um, town hall facility. Um, I think, as you all know, the, the towns had several requests for use of the facility, and and we wanted to make sure that we had a good, strong set of um, rules surrounding the use of the building. Um, I've dra we've drafted an ordinance that includes everything from the council's. Um, um, giving management the authority to set the rules and then within the guidelines established in the ordinance. It also includes the rules of conduct inside the building, um, things like no loitering, no um, weapons control, alcohol control, um, no disturbances, um, that those, those types of things. And so we should have a good set of rules for um, how people conduct themselves in the building um, as well as how they, how they use the building. Um, and it will be in your packet and for your review. Mr. Morris? Uh, when I was reviewing that, I had some questions if this applied to outside the building as well. It does. I believe if you see at the begin at the top, um, it should say, I think, I'm sorry if, if I'm scrolling through too quickly. Authority to, um, concerning the operation of town facilities and, and within within the ordinance itself, it does say in the grounds surrounding the facility. For example, um, if you look at um, 32.14, proposed 32.14, it says it shall be unlawful for any person to loiter within town hall or on the grounds adjacent thereto. So that's where we're getting um, the outside of the building restrictions as well. Any other questions? Well, part of, part of why I was asking this, you know, historically we are a, a nation of protesters. When things aren't going well, we gather around town hall and we let public officials like ourselves, you know, what's on the people's mind. Um, are there going to be any restrictions to that? Let's just say that folks in Indian Trail are really mad at what we're doing up here. I don't expect that, but it, it could happen. So they show up here at, at Town Hall. Is this, um, is this a problem? We, all of these rules would be limited by the freedom of speech. And so I, most of these were, uh, were pulled from existing ordinance on federal buildings. Um, they... Um, within these rules, there is an inherent First Amendment right that would supersede um, based on, and the law on this topic is extensive based on, ex depending on what is happening. For example, a protester, it is per it's legal to have a rule that prohibits somebody from blocking the door, um, the blocking the entry and the ingress and egress to the building. There are, um, a, a reasonable distance from the building is, is a legal protest. And so anything, and when a protester comes, they, the restriction would be limited to what is le uh, legally allowed by the um, by constitutional law and First Amendment. So we would certainly abide by those rules. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Do we need to vote on this tonight? No, this is yeah. just for FYI. Okay, and, and that was we'll bring it item 11 and or... That's right. Yeah, we, I would, yeah, and again, we'd like to, yeah, we're, we're asking that you review these and uh, the, the perfect concern that um, Councilman Morris just just um, per, just talked about right there. I, that's exactly what we're looking for. And if there's any in, any items that are not included or that are included, we'd love to have um, council input on things you think might be important. So, um, and then, it, but we should be ready to. We would ask that y'all vote on this um, probably at the May eighth meeting. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to item 12, discussion items A, board and committee appointments. There were some applications for vacant seats. Mr. Sadek, do you want to take the lead on this? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to say that we do have uh, a vacancy on the, it's an alternate vacancy on the planning committee. We do have one uh, seat number seven, 
This is vacant on stormwater. And we also do have seat number four, which is vacant on transportation. So we do have three seats that they're available out there to be filled. Vacant, I'm sorry. OK, there was a planning. Um, Ms. Kong. Do we, I see um, one of the applicants, Ms. Mimi back there. Um, did. Did we did we want to do anything with her tonight, or, or did, I mean, or is it possible? I know it's not on the agenda, so if it's not on the agenda, are we should we just? Well, I think the there was a confusion the with you, wasn't there? Didn't you think there was going to be a, a vote on that tonight? Yeah. yeah. Who? who yeah. I'm just curious. I'm not supposed to be talking like this, but who asked you to come? Oh, did you? I was. I thought town manager asked me to make sure the applicants were present tonight. Yeah, no, no problem. This this miscommunication. That's okay. But I, I didn't know since. Uh, if can, can we uh, amend the no, the items on the yeah, agenda? Yeah, why don't we? Well can can we just your... amend the agenda and 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 I want uh, 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 Miss Howell to nominate her because I think Miss Howell. I I think um what. The mayor was saying is that the item the is on, on the, agenda, the agenda, agenda, so we can proceed. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you can just proceed if you wish to take from the applications and appoint. Okay. Yep. This for the planning board. Correct. This is for the planning board. Correct. Well, uh, also, many? are we are? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Hart. Um, are we going to go ahead and make recommendations for the seats that are expiring here in in June? If there's applications that you're prepared to make nominations for, if not, we can do it on the next meeting. That's well within your rights. Do, uh, Mike, do we have any applications for the expiring terms? Do we have any right now? Well, um, for example, the planning board, uh, typically what happens is, um, you know, if we, um, we have um, alternate that can move up to, re to, to replace anybody going forward. Um, if I might. So we need to we need to make sure that we, and, and he's got the list I think here. Of yeah, if you're prepared for that, and if someone wants to make the motion, you can appoint somebody to the alternate and ask that alternate if they were interested in that expiring seat. At which time they can move into that seat if that council so chooses. Kathy, there is a vacant position on the planning that will be. There is a position that will be vacant at the end of June, correct? Um, there's, yes, there's June 30th. Yes, two. there two are. Two. Um, three. Is there three? Mm -hmm. yes. Counting the one we're at tonight makes right. three, right? Is that whatever? Well, you've got seats one, four, and five gotcha. expiring in uh, June. Yes, that's correct. Four and five in June, and also seat one. Right. It's well, planning. no, not, not according to for this. planning. No. The way no. I understand it, we have a vacant seat right now. For I, the I have. Um, what happened? Marcus was on the was on the planning board. Marcus came to council, so there's a, there's a yeah. But when I look at the Patrick, when I look at the table you supplied, um, when I see term expiration for planning, um, I see twenty one. That, that that is incorrect. Okay. It, it should have been. It should have been 18. 2018 okay. rolls up to 21, so the table reads those would be the new term expiration oh, dates. New terms. So the table that I gave you identifies that, um, you know, what's what's expiring and also what's vacant. So if you look down the column, they, it says expiring, expiring, expiring. The new term date would be 2021. Okay, so the ones that are 21 are the ones that will be expiring, essentially, then that's how I should read this. That's the new term date. Yeah, they expired okay. June 18th of this year. All right. And they're three-year terms. Do we yep. have enough to put each one in? Miss so. yes. Howell, did you want? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I just, my way of thinking was Miss Mimi was here tonight, and she was, um, through miscommunication or whatever, would was expecting to uh, be or, or be nominated or brought up for the planning board yeah, and I, that's fine I'm just thinking since she's here can I make a recommendation to the council yeah I, I would miss Mimi's been active in the community for several years sure. um, I would like to see the council appoint her to the a vac currently vacant alternate 
and ask her if she'd be willing to move into one of the expiring terms immediately upon its expiration and nominate her for both seats. I, I agree. I think that's what I was trying mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to wreck it all for her? But we have, <laughs> typically, well. don't we have alternates that move up? Yes. We yes. could. And we're we, filling we an alternate seat tonight. That we can. I yeah. You had to but there's going to be more than one seat expiring. <clears throat> Just three seats expiring. Well, Michael, don't you have to reapply? Yeah. Well, in the way it was done by the council a year or so ago, a year and a half, that first preference would be given to the alternates. One second, Ross. Okay. Oops. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Ross. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Sadik. I, I think just one one area of consideration may be that if we we do have some ex some seats that are approaching their expiration date, we may want to give the those members an opportunity to see if they'd like to be reconsidered for for uh, uh, reappointment. And so I, I think I would just like to give those members an opportunity to participate in that process uh, and just have that for council consideration. There's nothing saying you can't appoint her tonight as an alternate, and if she right. chooses to apply yeah, for the I'm, expiring I'm lost here. Go ahead, Mr. Marcus. Is it not is it Marcus is it not Marcus's seat that were that yeah, were that, that, that's so, correct. So Marcus has stepped down and, and and it's a vacant position that we can fill tonight. Yes. And, yes. and I understand what you're saying. You're you're saying we, you, you'd like, and I think Mike's maybe saying the same thing. Where you want to fill it maybe with an alternate yeah, pos yeah. position. Yeah. The only thing I, I was responding to is there, there was some mention about uh, nominating a member to replace Mr. McIntyre's former seat, which is an alternate seat. It's vacant, ready to be filled. Right. And then appointing them for one of the expiring seats that's going to expire in a month or two. And my point is only that let's, I would suggest that we give the, all, the current member's seat that's about to expire an opportunity to reapply. Council may make their own decision, but at least right. we should give them that opportunity. I, I understand. I, I understand. Can we make I, a suggestion I do and I don't, that really, I, I don't on the next meeting, Mr. Sadik, is it possible to contact those before the next meeting of the expiring seats and ask them if they wish to reapply? And then we can fill those in the first meeting in May? Uh, uh, absolutely, but I, I have a suggestion. Okay, go ahead. Right now, we do have a vacant seat yeah. for an alternate. This seat can be filled today, mm -hmm. and that member can be on the list with other ones that exist on the board right now for the evaluation and appointment at the end of the term. So we could go ahead and take... Sir, may yes. I? Uh, Ms. Gibbs did say she would be here tonight. She said she would be running late because of the, tra the uh, travel time from where she was. I don't know if she's here tonight, but I just wanted to make council aware that Ms. Gibbs was also coming. All right, let me Mr. Okay, Mr. Morris, did you have something real quick? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to just go ahead and nominate That's Cheryl correct. Mooney yeah. uh, to uh, fill yeah. this uh, seat if she's willing to do it. She has been involved for she has an application as, in, so. as, as, as long as I can remember. I believe she was on the planning board previously. Yes. So I believe she'd be a, the perfect person for it. Okay. Mr. Morris, is, if there's no further discussion, Mr. Morris has made the motion to appoint Cheryl Mimi to the currently vacant alternate seat on the planning board. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Awesome. Can we have Cheryl come up for a second? And come on up, awesome. Cheryl. Awesome. <laughs> we know how shy you are. <laughs> We're sorry for the confusion. Is it on? Any questions? No, I think we've, we've, we've pretty much well said we're, and we are honored to have you. Glad you're, glad you're going to serve and appreciate your volunteering. Welcome back. Absolutely. Welcome back. Thank yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was there anybody else that wished to be nominated and appointed tonight for any of the other vacancies that were applied for? No, he's already, he's already on there. He's yep. already on. Okay. He's but I, I do have yeah. a question. Now yes, that sir. We've done that. Um, so we, we've we've we spoke about. Folks that are presently serving on the committees, what if, and this is a big what if, what if we think that there's a person that's not pulling their weight on a committee, is when is the appropriate time to, to not uh, invite them back to be on the committee? Um, 
and do it the most tactful way. Yes. When people yes. reapply for the seat, you don't appoint them. You nominate somebody else that applied. So where that where I'm headed with that, let's just we have what maybe 20 people that are going to be reapplying for seats. I haven't looked through the list. Um, and perhaps there's a couple of persons that one or more of the council feels wouldn't be a, a good choice. We don't necessarily want to invite them back, but <laughs> <laughs> you can't apply, stop though. them from they applying. Apply. <laughs> it's their right as a citizen to apply. You just don't have to vote for them. You don't want them to apply, right? In three you might want to make them an offer they can't refuse. And, and also, can, can we get an update on um, attendance to the different committees and boards? Yeah, for each of the applicants that's reapplying, yeah. that's a good idea. Well, Mr. Moyes, what I was going to say is uh, we experienced something like that on the Stormwater Committee recently. Mm -hmm. uh, if you miss three attendants, you're out. And, uh, and that, that decision is made by the chair of that committee and the board member. So we're monitoring attendance. So anytime somebody gets to three, immediately they're Three out. consecutive or three? Uh, th uh, actually, I don't think it's three consecutive. I think it's three consecutive. It, That's it correct. Is three. Or 30 percent in a 12-month period. And is, is there a procedure in place to you know, notify them, say, hey, this is your second strike, one more, and you, know, you may be that, out? That's within the bylaws of each committee is the, where right. it talks about what their rules and responsibilities are as a committee member, and then it talks about that attendance policy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Is there any other appointments tonight, or we want to just put together the information and invite people to reapply and pick a date in May to put it on the agenda? Okay. Patrick, it looks like we're done with that for now. Thank you. Thank you. Brings us to the manager's report. Patrick, your turn. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to start with this item on the report, which is which is loitering. Uh, I come on the we I come to work on the weekend because I really enjoy it. It's it's uh, quiet. It's uh, one of the best places I've ever worked. It's a good environment, and I really enjoy it. But for the last two to three months, the same individuals, they come in in their car, walk, uh, drive around the building, they stop in front of the building, different time, in the morning, at lunch, at night time. And I, I'm not sure if they know that we do have cameras that document uh, their presence here on site. And again, uh, I've, uh, I've mentioned incidents like that in the past, and council asked me, uh, uh, who is this person that that uh, uh, requesting all the PIRs? And, and I'm going to say this time that it's the same individual, Mr. Falkenberry and his wife, that they are always here at nighttime, daytime, in the morning, and uh, uh, it's sometimes I, I watch out for part-time employees. I haven't called Captain Chase yet, but I will do that, and I will continue to look after the safety of uh, uh, my staff and myself. So uh, I'm glad Karen included this item and, and, and the rules and regulations in the town ordinances. But again, it's the same individuals all the time, and it's, 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 it's really getting, uh, uh, getting old, and I just wanted to make council and the public aware of that today. Anything else, Patrick? No, sir. And in regard to the manager's report, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, we, we've been spending all the time trying to get uh, the budget ready for uh, before the end of the fiscal year. And there is one item that uh, really I have not gotten a chance to wrap up, even though staff already taken care of their parts, which is the manager's report. So uh, starting tomorrow, I'll try to put uh, the manager's report for the last, uh, last six weeks, six to seven weeks, and uh, probably uh, forward, uh, forward a copy to council, and uh, we'll put one on the web website as soon as possible. Other than that, um, uh, any questions that council have in regard to any projects, any items out there, I'll be more than happy to respond. Madam, 
The floor is yours. Um, I'm going to ask the council tonight to show their appreciation and support of our town manager. I think he's been through a lot. We all like him. We're getting everything done. It's unbelievable. He's fair to most people. I'm sure there's one or two out there that, that wouldn't feel your 100%, but that's okay. Um, the information that was read here a little bit ago was put on the website by, I believe, the same person. And uh, it's, it's really getting old because, you know, like David said, we're succeeding, we're moving on, and they're going to go after us. And that's exactly what's happened. So I know this is a little out of order, but I would really appreciate the fellow council members to... You can handle that any way you want. A vote of confidence, a vote hip confidence. hip hooray, <laughs> um, a six-week six week paid vacation in Tahiti. <laughs> Patrick, I'll try, but I don't think I'd get away with it. <laughs> but if we could show a hands for a support. A support okay, uh, Ms. Howes asked, uh, made a motion for a, a vote of support and confidence for the town manager. All in favor? I hope that passes I'll the I'll even <laughs> add to that, even though I don't get a vote. Absolutely. So that's 100% unanimous, Patrick. Mrs. Howes, I do, I do thank you and thank council, and again, if it wasn't for your support, neither staff nor myself could accomplish what we accomplished so far. And we're not going to let anything stop us from moving okay. forward. We're moving forward. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now that brings us to council comments. Uh -oh. Mr. Morse. Where's your speech? <laughs> <laughs> Talked enough tonight. <laughs> Well, good timing. Um, you know, I, I've only dealt with one town manager in my short term as a council person, but um, so I have no one to compare him to as far as working directly with. But we have had previous town managers that have been less than um, available to the citizens and, and possibly the staff. But I want to reiterate my support for you, Patrick. Um, again, so many times I've come up here uh, and, and leaned on you for advice and, and direction, and uh, you haven't instructed me how to do things. You have you know, kind of pointed me in the direction and then turned me loose to make my bad choices or good choices um, as I'm processing uh, the information. But, um, but I think we're very lucky. Uh, you've got a lot of knowledge. You've really helped me out with CARPO and some of the understanding some of the transportation needs and functions uh, in our community. And I think it's very unfair to constantly bring up past, um, bring up the past when it's not relevant to the present. So, and we all, I'm sure, if we all look behind us, we can see something that we wish that we'd have done better um, or somebody wouldn't have noticed, but um, being in the public eye, we're, we're targets. But I do want to say that to you, I think you're one hell of a town manager, and I, I appreciate you working for the town the way you do, and I feel we're very fortunate to have you. Um, And everyone that attended tonight, thank you so much. It's, it, it's great that y'all take time out of your day. I know you're tired and ready to go home, have supper. Um, but coming here, keeping us accountable, and, and sharing your concerns with us is greatly appreciated. I hope y'all have a great night. Red? Ms. Howe. Well, I'm happy to see the vote was unanimous. And, it, you know, we can go on about Patrick, but he's very patient and understanding, and uh, he gives you an explanation. Uh, you just feel good when you leave here, at least I do. He's never been short with me, um, but we'll explain something if we have a little discussion about it. I hope the employees appreciate you, too, because we've been through some battles here in the last several years, and things are settled down now, 
and we are moving forward and a lot of people are upset because we are one unit here right now and we're all trying to help each other and we respect each other and this continues negative stuff and, and, and I think everybody has a right to public comment and Lord knows I fought for it 15 years ago but there comes a time when enough's enough. I mean, I, I, just, uh, I just can't see why this goes on every time, every week. But anyway, we're glad to have you, Patrick, you. and the staff. Um, there's some good guys sitting over there. There really are. They've been, been around for a while. Uh, thank you for coming this evening. And uh, I'm just happy to be on this council. I truly am. There's some nice men on this, and they are. I'm the only female, of course, but I'll shut up now. <laughs> I'm getting like David here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cohn. Well, actually, I wasn't going to say much tonight, but, but, I, but I think I will. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just, uh, as, as we know, and, when I, and I'm going to say we know, and when I say we, I see a, almost a lot of the same familiar faces in the crowd. And, and um, much appreciated, the faces that I see here. Uh, but we kind of know what's going on in town because we come to the meetings. And it's, it's very disheartening when, when we know really what, what good is trying to get done. And you look at these, these two or three people in town who come up and, and try to create habit. And if, you know, and I don't even want to mention their websites, but when you look at their website, there is absolutely zero comments on them. There's, there's not, nobody's making the comment. But th these are a few of the things that, that, that have happened just recently. The, the council's having illegal meetings, okay? The, uh, uh, and meaning what they're doing is more than, more than two are, are meeting at, at, a, at one place at a time. That, that is not happening. That, that has never happened with this council and don't ever believe it. We're having secret meetings, uh, secret meetings in this building. And when, when you put that out online, you're basically saying that not only are you uh, questioning the judgment of the council, but you're also questioning the judgment of the staff because the staff would be seeing what's going on here. And if, the, if they're letting the, the council have secret meetings or know they're going on, then we're all a bunch of dirty people. So, uh, you know, that, that's not happening. You know, uh, a liar. He, he's pretty, people like to call people a liar. Uh, uh, they, uh, you know, you're eating crow. Uh, he comes, he's embarrassing us with all the stuff that, that they're finding. Uh, brings religion into the fact that uh, on the websites, we're talking about a Muslim, former Muslim person, former Muslim employee, former... Uh, there's a conspiracy here. It's always uh, written right there. there we're, we've got this conspiracy going, uh, and I, I'll, I'll be quick to, to. There's hypocrisy, of course, uh, and if you didn't know it, there's a ten-inch space at the bottom of the stairs down there that's that big that this whole building is just built wrong because there's ten inches of space down there that shouldn't be there. Um, but what I really think we should be talking about. It is not all of the, the negatives. And I think we should be talking about the positives of the town. Let, let's face it, we're not going to have a tax increase this year. Uh, at least I don't think we are, are we? No, <laughs> that's up to you. I, I, can't, I can't say that. As far as I know, we're not. Uh, and we have the lowest tax rate of any town of our size in, in the United States of America. I mean, we're, we're fantastic. We've got the best police force in, in town. We've got the best... Uh, of a lot of things. People care about our town. Um, uh, we're starting on a complete street out here that's going to make our town a much more beautiful place. Uh, we got the roundabouts and the roads, and we're very fortunate to have a town manager that's, that's uh, probably going to handle one of our biggest needs that we have is getting roads put into our town or getting roads where we can, uh, you know, travel again without all the traffic. Uh, the council's working hard. I think the staff is, is comfortable. Uh, one of the things that Jerry said, he, he's had one town manager. I think I've been here for five. So, um, and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge. Yeah, you can, I missed one a minute ago, but I, I thought back there is five. And, and uh, um, you know, I, I, and listen, they, they all of them had good qualities. There, there's not one 
uh, town manager that did not have certain qualities that weren't good or, or bad or what. They all had good qualities. But I've never seen a town manager that worked as hard as you do, Mr. Sadick. Uh, I've never seen a town manager that's here every Saturday and every Sunday and works works with the uh, with these guys. Um, uh, you choose to wear two hats, uh, which is you know is the town engineer and the town manager. Uh, don't need to say much about that. Save the town money, but it's because you want to do it. You know, it's uh, you're doing a good job. We have got a great staff. We got the VF. Uh, the FW Memorial coming up and uh, all of these positives create a, a conflict when when people are constantly looking for the for wrong and constantly looking for the bad in the town you know if, if some of these people would spend some of their time trying to do good and I'm asking them and that they're gonna listen to this I'm asking them Come on over to our side. And when I say our side, look, come on over to the side of wanting to help the town, wanting to get things going. I'd open my arms up for you and say, come on, let's go. Let's make this a better town. Let's make it, make it something that we all can be proud of instead of constantly find something that, that, that's, that's wrong. But uh, anyway, since I wasn't going to say anything, I think I probably <laughs> said enough. And uh, I appreciate everybody for, out, uh, for coming out tonight. And... Uh, Remember the golf tournament on the 30th, and please call me. If you know anybody that wants to play golf uh, and wants to join in all the fun, let me know. Thank you. Mary Alvarez. First, I'd like to give a shout-out to Turning Point for coming here. It's a really great organization here in Union County that provides a priceless place for those suffering from unspeakable crimes against them. Uh, please, if you don't know about them, do some research on them. They'd be, any one of our children could, could have a need down the road when we're not around to, or we're, we're long gone, or they're our children's children. Um, the past two weeks, we've been planting trees. Well, the staff's been planting trees and I've been taking credit for it. Um, if you've never been part of <coughs> the Arbor Week and the Tree Initiative going out to the schools, their faces light up. Uh, the schools look forward to it. If you've ever gone around our schoolyards in Union County, it's pretty much solid rock. And planting the trees that we have around our schools has softened the grounds, has made it prettier, better for the environment. And they look forward to us coming back every year. To date, since I first started this seven years ago, we're approaching 7,000 trees planted in Indian Trail, which is a credit to our staff, our schools, mostly our children for caring, because they're the ones out there planting the trees. I, I, I'm proud of them. It, it's fun. And most of all, I mean, more so proud of them, the staff that goes out to be part of it. Mr. Bill, our county arborist, comes every year. Nobody knows more about trees than him. Um, Hayden. Hayden's unbelievable, being out last week with the birth of his child and then rushing back to finish this program. We have a great staff. We ha this is a great program. I hope it continues for many years. And most of all, it's helping the environment and teaching our next generation to be respectful to our environment. Uh, Patrick, thank you for continuing the program. Uh, take off these two weeks to be part of this. It's, it's inspiring, and I appreciate it. It was just a small idea I had, and the staff took it in. <coughs> ran with it, and I appreciate that. Um, David, I'm looking forward to the golf tournament. I've got gift cards and stuff to give you and whatever else you need me to go out and get. Um, it's our job, and the council's done a great job to protect our employees. Somebody wants to go after someone, come after us, which, you know, it's been a few weeks since I've been on the cover of one of their websites, so I'm smiling. You can take my picture. I'm looking forward to see this little squirrel on it again. Um, I've run into several town employees out at various stores that live here in town and comment, how you doing? Is everything okay? And the first thing out of their mouth is, we love Patrick. Mm -hmm. To come up here and continue 
with the same nitpicking from articles and things you found is what is wrong with this country. Picking and choosing what you want to put to give people an opportunity to try and rally behind you with the negative is what divides us. And this is what pi people like that thrive on. I would love to say just don't pay any attention to it, but I believe the people or the, the three or four people that actually go and read this stuff actually get comic relief from it. Popcorn sales go up. <laughs> so stay away from the town employees and the staff. That's crossing a line. That is uncalled for. That is unethical from a person that claims, claims to be the most ethical person that's ever walked on the ground of Indian Trail. You're being the most unethical person any of us can meet. There's three sides to every coin, the left, the right, and the truth. For once, come up here and tell the truth when you're bringing up an article. Stay out of people's personal lives. That's crossing an even further line. If it's a performance issue, contact the town clerk or a council member. But going into people's personal lives and digging up the one thing that they made the news for or accidentally walking through the supermarket and a child ran down the lane and you ran down their foot and for the next 10 years, remember when they ran over that child's foot in Publix? You need to fire them. That's all you'll ever hear. I make new mistakes every day. When looking at a mistake someone makes, or anything, and not saying anything Patrick's ever done is a mistake, I don't even want to hear about it. It's your intention when you make the mistake, were you intentionally out to hurt someone, and what did you learn from it? Your mistakes in life are your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and every step towards success. So continue to make your mistakes, just learn from them. Patrick, I wouldn't trade you for anything. Thanks. You're a straight shooter. You'll be the first to tell me when I'm being a putz, and I appreciate that. You do an outstanding job. The staff adores you. Council, you're doing a great job. You come to these meetings. They're professional. You honor the positions you hold and the people that have fought for this country for your right to run for that office. Keep doing what you're doing. And... Um, Remember, Saturday's the uh, Earth Day celebration. We have a great festival coming up. Lots of students with receiving awards. Come on out. And uh, I'm getting off my bully pulpit because if you want to see my picture, it'll be up on one of those websites tomorrow and probably for the next week. David, I'm going to give you a break for a bit. Thank you. Okay? Keep talking, man. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's just... It's going after a good person, no. Going after one of our staff, no. And uh, Kathy, thanks for all the help with everything for all these presentations. It's not easy putting these presentations together. Here's the lady that does it, and I'm always throwing something at her. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And everybody else, God bless you. Have a safe week. Thank you for coming. Come again. Any one of us is always available for you, except when my voicemail's full. Sorry about that, David. No, that's, that's no problem. And Karen, before before I get called a liar and get put on there, I work for. I mean, I've I've been here with four town managers, not five. I, went, I had to go back and think. But. Thank you for correcting your testimony, Thank sir. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one one quick thing for the the uh, vote that Shirley took. That's part of our record, please. Okay. Make sure that's okay. part of minutes. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Mr. McIntyre. Thank you. Um, maybe I should just say a few short things because I think these guys have covered all the ground, right? Um, for those of you who may not necessarily know me, you could probably tell, tell that I have an accent. Um, I'm actually from the mountains in North Carolina, and that's the way we speak. <laughs> but um, having said that, um, uh, growing up on the islands, you know, my grandfather was a farmer. Um, he was very big into agriculture, but he also taught me a lot of things. And one of the things I can remember him saying is that, um, is, well, there's two things I'll, I'll mention. Um, the first thing is um, work is never degrading as long as it's honest work. And the second thing he said is empty barrels make the most noise, all right? When they're empty, you hear a lot of noise from them. Doesn't mean that they're, they're not worth a thing, but make a lot of noise. Um, it's very unfortunate that um, 
in this country where a lot of men who and women who fought in the military to protect our freedom, giving us the rights to run for election, to protest outside, whatever we may choose to do within reason, um, that you would attack somebody based on their religion. Um, that crosses a line for me. I don't care what religion you are, as long as you want to serve your God in any way that you feel is, you know, the way that you want to do it, that's it. Once you cross that line and you attack somebody's religion, then therefore, basically, I ignore you. Um, and, and the reason I do is because you're not worth it. Um, I've been on council even shortening everybody up here. This is my first experience working with a town manager, so I'm going to judge um, him by the experience that I have. Every time I've called or I've asked a question, um, he's never been rude, he's never been unkind. He's always listened, he's always answered my questions, right? And I know that he's putting the town first. So Patrick, you also have my full support, right? I enjoy working with you. I like what you're doing for the town. And I think we all appreciate that. Um, we're public persons, meaning that we have to be out in the public, and the public will sometimes say things to us that we may not necessarily like. But <clears throat> I'm a very big boy. I can take it. They don't have the, so. If they come to you, just send them to me. Just say, talk to Councilman McIntyre. He has an <laughs> accent, you know. He'll be fine. Um, but just keep doing what you're doing because we appreciate it, and I think you're doing a good job. Um, town staff, I know, is, from what I can tell, they're all happy with what, what's been going on. Council has been very supportive. Our job is to see what we can do to make your jobs easier to provide the services for the town and the people, and that's it. I think we're very fortunate to have you with your knowledge of the roads, um, construction, things that you can point us out. I am not an engineer. I cannot tell you what should be built there, but you guys, you and your staff can guide us and lead us to that, there, to make a good decision when some of these things come up. Um, Council, I know that I do call on you sometimes to m maybe ask you a question or to talk to David about basketball. And <laughs> on Sunday, by the way, I'm going to give him a little beating at home in basketball. But that being said, um, I appreciate you guys kind of guiding me as well. Those of you with more experience than I have and, and kind of helping me see that way. To all the people who've come out tonight, thank you very much for coming out. Um, we're here to serve you in any capacity that we can. We take this very seriously and we enjoy it because it's us doing something to make our town better. Um, drive safe tonight and thank you. Mr. Head. Good. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess save the best for last. <clears throat> um, first of all, Mr. Kleon, thank you. We appreciate what you've done for us. Um, you've set an example for, for everybody in this town. To, you know, when you see a problem, you know, you don't just talk about it, you act on it. And thank you very much. Um, you know, I have uh, I've tried to counsel some of these people about uh, what's been going on by saying, you know, when, when somebody has to go back to 2014, 2015, 2016 um, to, to pull up, pardon my French, this crap, um, it, it tells me a lot. It tells me that, that this council is doing exactly what we, what we ran to do, that we are very cohesive, we're in it for all the right reasons. Um, so, uh, you know, I can state um, that I have finally made the big time uh, on several of these uh, websites or whatever you want to call them. Bring it. Bring it. Because you, the more you're bringing it, it tells me we're doing the right thing. That's, that's just it. Um, a little bit about this man to my left. Um, I've, I've probably spent... Uh, I don't know that I've spent more time, but I, 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 I've spent more time than my wife wanted me to spend over here, I can tell you that, um, <laughs> to learn. And there's no better person to, to, to teach me what I need to know than, than Patrick. Um, he's here. Uh, I, I come in on Saturdays. I've been in on Sundays. I've been in at night. Um, I, I've been with him at 9 o'clock at night. Um, he does whatever it takes. Uh, to make this town run, run correctly. Uh, and for that, I'm, I'm very appreciative. Uh, my orientation in, in getting up to speed um, continues, um, 
but without him, I, I wouldn't 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 be to the point where I'm at right now. Um, you know, it, it's 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 sad, I, and I, I will be the first to say I have been here. I have been here on Saturdays. I have watched these people. Uh, I've been to some of the meetings and and watched what they do. Um, it's um, it's their right. Um, uh, forgive me. I, I normally don't talk a lot, but I'm I'm going to have a couple things to say here. Uh, the the private the 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 secret meetings. I know exactly when that took place um, because I made a joke of it. Um, and quite frankly, I mean, it's what we were doing. We started doing developer meetings um, some time ago before we ever started doing them here. And what we would do, there would be two of us come in, talk to the developers. We would leave, and two more would come in, along with Patrick and then the uh, developer. So this one time, we were really going to, uh, to make sure that um, we weren't um, showing any, we weren't in a, in a secret meeting, in that we, we again, as good, as, because we are very interested in what we're doing, we've taken longer on some of these meetings. And quite frankly, what happened was, um, I walked into a, um, an art exhibit, um, and there was um, Jerry and the former council member, Monty, and there was the Falkenberries. I walked in, um, and didn't even know there, that there was an art show going on, but decided, hey, I wanna go see what, what um, local artists do. And walked in, I saw um, the Falconberries, and I saw Jerry and, and Monty behind them, and I immediately backed out, and I made a comment to, to Michael, said, look, we're not doing anything, I'm walking out. So we got written up for that. I, I guess we get demerits for that, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it, it's time to put this to a stop. Um, as everybody has told you, this council is working together exactly what we said we would do. Um, and I think that's the other thing that's irritating to some of these people is that we do get along. We are getting things done. And so that, when you have to go out and, again, look at the past and look at, okay, I'm a puppet, you know, I, you know, um, I, I'm honored to be in a picture with, with David and Shirley. You know, I was in a picture of the, um, with something derogatory to say, but hey, uh, I love the picture. Um, so again, I'm, I'm usually one to, to, to kind of stay out of the fray, um, but um, when, you, when you try to belittle a person because of their religion, because of his work ethic, um, you've, you've crossed the line, you've crossed the line with me. Um, so Patrick, thank you for all you've done. Um, and we spent quite a bit of time together, um, I, I, uh, and I appreciate what, you, what you've done. Everybody, uh, staff, thank you, uh, as always. Um, um, Cheryl, appreciate you coming on board. Um, everyone have a good night, and I uh, appreciate you listening to my tirade. Thank you. Wow. Well. I was only recently portrayed as the green slime monster from <laughs> Ghostbusters shoving my face full of hamburgers. <laughs> I'd love to know what that one meant. My daughter said it looked like me. Um, at this time... Add one thing. Yes, go ahead, Councilman. Um, I just want to add one thing. Um, Friday night, I actually strolled over to Chestnut Square Park, is that right? No, the little park, <laughs> Crossing Paths. We were the ones that gave them all C names, so yeah, they, yeah. All, they all run together. But um, I, big shout out to the staff, um, Hayden and Adam. I mean, that was a great event. There was a heck of a good concert. Um, they're going to be doing these fourth, f first Fridays, is that right? Th fourth Fridays? Movies are fourth Fridays and concerts are third Thursdays. Third Thursdays, okay. Um, I, I that was a fabulous show that those guys put on. The weatherman messed up though; he got cold <laughs> right there um, at at the intermission. But I just want to, you know, I know I've been one of the biggest critics about the parks, but to see all the folks that came out there and 
even was standing there witness a couple business deals that are, are taking place here at Indian Trail, where people had um, had met each other, exchanged contact information, and there's some things rolling. But uh, I, just a big shout out. That was a great event, and looking forward to the next one. Well, that brings us to a closed session. In accordance with NCGS 143-318-1183, to protect attorney-client privilege. Does not look like it's a long one. So I need a motion to go to closed session. So moved. Mr. Collins made a motion. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Five minutes in the... Uh, I need a motion to come out of closed session. So Mr. Moved. Morris has made the motion. All in favor? Favor? Mr. Mo David. Mr. Cohn? Just raise your hand. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to adjourn. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Okay.